Yeah? Yep. Yeah, awesome. Cool. So uh, thanks for organizing this event. Thanks, Tony, for a uh, great presentation. Um, quick show of hands, how many of you guys have heard of the Google Cardboard VR project? All right, cool. How many of you have actually tried tried it out? Remember, how many of you built built one yourself? Okay, cool. So um, what I would like to talk about today is the fact that there are, oh, and one more question. How many of you have smartphones? <laughs> how many? Okay. All right. So there are 1.75 billion people in the world walking around using a smartphone today. And that smartphone is a virtual reality device, and, and they, don't, they just don't know it yet. Right? So think about, think about that. What does it mean as they start to figure that out? Right? And things like cardboard and, and what we're doing is um, helping them figure it out really quickly. What happens uh, at that moment? It seems like it could be a, a really clear tipping point. You know, how fast are people starting to figure it out? Well, if we look back at some other media and technology transitions, these things happen about three times faster every time there's a big shift. So let's look at radio, right? Radio, television, and the internet, I would say, are the three big technology and media shifts that have happened in the past you know, century. The radio kind of had its, uh, had its start back in the, around 1920. It had, you know, a little bit ahead of that, there was uh, there were people using it for you know, wireless telegrams, and that's kind of Basically, the model there was to send mail faster, right? But as we think of radio today as, as a format of media, uh, it really started in about 1920, where people were getting these boxes, keeping them in their house, listening to music and the news and whatnot. And uh, when the radio first came out for, for consumer applications, uh, 1920 took about 38 years to reach 50 million people. And at the time, it cost between $300 and $4,000. Um, in today's denomination uh, to get a, a commercial radio. Interestingly, what you're looking at here is a diagram from a U.S. Commerce uh, flyer that they handed out in the 19, early 1920s so people could make their own radios at home. There was such a demand for radios, and that circular cylindrical looking thing was actually an oatmeal box. So that was the tuner. So it's a little analog to the DIY cardboard project. The early radios were also made from cardboard, and there was a big DIY component to it. So television came around in 1939, and uh, it was announced at the World Fair, and uh, it took 14 years to reach 50 million users. And the early televisions of the day cost $10,000, right? And they mimicked the radio. There wasn't a whole lot of content for them. There was somebody, you know, stand up there and read from a piece of paper, and you know, that was pretty much it. Um, then along comes the internet. Mid 1991, it becomes available for the first time for the general public, and within four years, there are 50 million people using the internet. The computer at that time is, you know, roughly 1,700 to 2,600 dollars today's dollars. <coughs> And now, we're here, right? July 2014, you can turn your smartphone into what some people are calling the next format of media, and all you need is $25 and a smartphone you probably already know. So, let's look at that curve, right? Each one happens three times faster than the previous one. So what is that? You extrapolate that out. That means by the end of 2015, there are going to be 50 million people using virtual reality viewers, actually. And that's 17 months from now. That almost tracks exactly the exponential growth. 17.7, I think, is the number of cycles you need to get to 50 million. So it's pretty phenomenal that we're kind of at this moment in time that this could be a real tipping point and it could happen so incredibly quickly. And you can start to see how it could happen quickly, right? You've got this huge technology base on which this new format of media is coming into the world. Each 
success of one was a lot easier than the previous one because the world's more connected. You, know, you have uh, lots of people using these mobile phones already. There are a lot of people who already have content and know how to develop applications who can port over existing digital content to this format. Um, so it's not, it's not hard to imagine how it could happen a lot. So I think these devices are going to be a big part of it, and we're, we're here to really try and help accelerate it. Um, you know, the future really is it's already here, and it's just not evenly distributed yet. And uh, we think these smart smartphones are going to be the way that virtual reality gets experienced by the masses. Um, so a uh, quick update on what we've been up to. We entered the virtual reality world seven weeks ago. We, seven weeks ago in a day, we were not making anything virtual reality related. We weren't even really considering uh, making a product for virtual reality. Um, but very quickly, we saw what Google had done at the I.O. conference, and we realized that there was a lot of people that would want to experiment with this and try it out. And so we made it easy for, for people to just get the components and put together a kit for themselves. So in the last seven weeks, we've been quite busy. We've shipped almost 15,000 VR viewers. We have 100,000 in production. Uh, and most of those are spoken for from retailers or other partners. Uh, we've launched the first, and this isn't data, but we've launched the first smartphone VR app store. Um, and really, we just want People who are looking for content at this at this point to be able to find it without too much difficulty, and we would love to support WebGL stuff in that format as well. So if you're out there, and you're thinking about doing uh, an app for VR, do it as a WebGL app, and we'll we'll put it in our app store. It's right alongside all the native stuff. So uh, we're not married to anybody's platform, um, and we were. We're working very hard to make sure that we can get these products into the mass retail stores by holiday. Because I think this is going to be the holiday, and this is a phenomenal gift, and it's just going to throw fuel on the fire and accelerate this whole, whole space. So uh, hopefully a lot of you will be putting it in the stockings of your friends or loved ones. Um, so why should you care? You know, VR is a new, it's a new media and a new technology. It's a totally new category, and it's completely <coughs> This is really going to be the gateway into virtual reality industry. Um, mobile developers, you've got a completely green field opportunity. You know, wind the clock back to you know, before you know, there was like a billion apps in the apps, Apple's App Store, the Play Store, and you've got that opportunity today with VR. Um, if you have been playing around with making content for virtual reality, you now will have an audience. You know, it's been a big chicken and egg problem. You know, it's hard to justify making content for such a small audience. But if you know, a small percentage of the people who have a smartphone end up using, using it for virtual reality, you're going to have a lot of people. You're going to have a big audience to sell your, your, your content and your, your apps to. So, Let's think about, you know, if VR really is the next media category, what what does the future of that look like? What, you know, what is the, a world with virtual reality? We can look back again. I like to look at history for, for certain lessons. You know, we have the old media, radio, television, and the internet. And you could say radio and television, they were really about the economics of attention. You had something interesting that people wanted to watch. It could be news. It could be, you know, a show. You basically were as powerful as the size of your audience, and it was a one-way media format. Right? It was broadcast to you. You, at the receiving end, were basically exchanging your attention to what people were putting in front of you. Uh, the privilege of watching the content. And of course, that was nice and bundled up so that advertisers could get you to buy their cereal or you know, vacuum cleaners or whatever, whatever have you. Then along comes the internet, and it's great. It's this two-way kind of format. I can start navigating through 
uh, through this new medium. <coughs> and it went from an attention economy to an intention. An intention was a valuable thing. And what's more expressive of, of your intent than going to Google search box, starting to type in, you know, what is the best X, right? Google now can bundle up not just your attention, but your intent and sell it to advertisers. Right? It's kind of interesting that the common theme here has been advertising. <laughs> um, but, so what is virtual reality about? Well, I think what we're going to see is the merging of attention and intention, and it's going to turn into experience. So what does it mean when you're not just broadcasting and getting someone's attention, but you, you can kind of really interact with them at the experiential level? And if you look back at, at, at this, you know, the kind of intention model of the internet, it's pretty amazing when you think about how much um, you look at advertising as like a mean platform of, of, of the dollars on the internet. There's still like only 10% of ad dollars get spent on like performance marketing. So like 90% of, of people spending on marketing and advertising are still doing it in, in this kind of what I would deem a lifestyle experiential way, right? I'm, I'm putting a, a full page ad in Vogue because I want my company or my product to be associated with that lifestyle. So you could say, so that's kind of experiential. It's about experience. And so I don't know what that looks like in this next realm when you can take experience and intent and you can smash them together and do new interesting things. Maybe advertising is not the model. Um, maybe something completely different. But this is what's going to get figured out over the next five, ten years, I think. And it's exciting. You know, that's pretty much it. Dev at dodopies.com if you want to shoot us some emails. Uh,